Welcome to the South Freeport Congregational Church. We are delighted that you are joining with us for the worship of God, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, we welcome you. Today is the second Sunday of Lent, and Lent is that season in our Christian year when God invites us to go deeper within ourselves to really look at who we are as human beings in relation to each other, in relation to the world, and in relation to God and Jesus. To help us along that journey during this season, Jeremy and I are going to focus our reflections in these weeks on the healing stories of Jesus. And if ever there was a time when we needed healing, it is now. Joining me in worship are Pastor Jeremy, as well as Jenny, and she will be calling in her scripture all the way from Florida, as well as Church President Bill. And so we are delighted and give thanks for their leadership and, of course, our marvelous musicians, David and Dennis. We give thanks for them, as well as the amazing video skills of M. Thank you to all of you. Now our old age message will feature from some special guests, Reverend Mike and Reverend Helen. Reverend Mike and Reverend Helen are special guests because in addition to being UCC ministers, they're also artists and they have created a beautiful cross out of broken pieces of sea glass. Now, so why is that important? Well, in this season, when we are focusing on our own brokenness, and the healing of Jesus. We're using that as an image of how to create something whole and beautiful out of our own brokenness. Think about pieces of sea glass that you find along the beach. And they're wonderful and beautiful, but they're uh, in unusual shapes. They can be jagged or they can be smooth. And individually, they represent brokenness, broken off from something else. But when put together in a mosaic or some other form, they create something new and beautiful. And this is a symbol. This represents what happens during this season of Lent, how God and Jesus work with us and in us to take what is broken inside and create something new and whole and restored. So I hope you will, you will welcome Reverend Mike and Reverend Helen for our, all, for our all age message. And perhaps you will be inspired to take on a project of putting sea glass together in a mosaic during Lent. We'll send you instructions by email and we hope that you'll participate. So now let us center ourselves in God's presence. Take a deep breath and hear these words from the psalmist. The Lord is your light and your salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of your life. Have faith, confidence, and peace. Let us worship God. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a mission moment on this Sunday morning. Today, I come to you on behalf of the main school of ministry, also referred to as MISAM. This Sunday, the last Sunday of February, has been designated MISAM Sunday by the main conference of the United Church of Christ. All across the state today, various churches have guest student speakers from the MISAM program. In fact, while you were watching this video, depending on what time of day you were watching it, I myself have done a Zoom service with the congregation up in Hancock, Maine to talk about the program. Well, for those of you that may not be aware of it, the Maine School of Ministry was started in 2013. It was created to answer a call for ministry education here in Maine, especially after the closing of Bangor Theological Seminary, followed by Andover Newton's program folding into Yale Divinity. The main conference has recognized the need to train future church leaders for tomorrow, especially as seminary enrollment continues to decline all around the country. Maine itself potentially faces a shortage in the near future of qualified church leaders. I myself have been a student since the birth of the program and last week started my 12th course. All of these courses continuing to develop me, 
to prepare me and to help me to do the work that I do with all of you today. I come to you this morning as a mission moment asking for your support of the Nissan program. Funds that are raised throughout the state today go towards program development, securing highly qualified instructors, many of which who were and are Divinity Program professors today, assistance with the technology expense for the courses taken virtually during this pandemic time, and of course for scholarships. If you would like to make a donation to the program, you may send a check to Beth in the office with MESOM, M-E-S-O-M, in the four line, and then she will send a single check to the main conference in the days ahead. If you have more questions about the program, or even if you yourself are interested in taking some courses for further personal development, I'd love the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you so much for your consideration for support of this great program, and God bless you all. Good morning. Uh, meditation for today's service is from a 13th century famous Persian poet. He was born in 1207 in Afghanistan and died in 1273 in Turkey at the age of 66. His name is Rumai. Now, it just so happens that Reverend Sally, when she gave me this medic meditation to read, uh, she didn't realize that Rumai was my favorite poet. And in fact, I have in my home uh, one of his famous um, poems that I want to read and share with you uh, before I read the meditation. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. And now the meditation for today. The wound is the place where the light enters you. May we pray these words together. Day by day, dear Lord, of the three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, to love thee more dearly, to follow thee more nearly, day by day.
Hi, my name is Mike Dunphy. I'm a retired um, minister, a friend of um, Pastor Sally. And, um, and I'm Helen, friend of Pastor Sally and uh, pastor at a church here in Plymouth, Massachusetts. So after I retired, and before I retired actually, I spent a lot of time just making stuff. That's my professional title now. And um, I make stuff out of rocks, and um, you see that the base of this cross is actually a rock that I sliced at an angle and polished the top, and I had it laying around and didn't know what I would use it for. So in the end, I, it became the base of this um, uh, sea glass cross. This is a wooden frame that I cut out. It's held up by thin fish line. The way um, I went about making the cross was to put some um, wax paper on the table and all kinds of pieces of uh, sea glass around it. And then I arranged it in a way uh, that seemed to look like it was a cross. Then um, um, I used super glue. It was fragile, it broke about five times, and I kept putting it back together. and. Uh, saying uh, 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 prayers uh, uh, for patients. Uh, but in the end, um, it turned out lovely. So um, you wouldn't pr probably try to make something this fancy, but you could make a little frame out of popsicle sticks. The easiest way to cut a popsicle stick to the length you want it is just take a pair of ordinary pliers and put it there and away it goes across the room. <laughs> If you want to make it black, but you don't want to paint, then you could use a, a, a Sharpie and, uh, you know, just make it black. Uh, you can see it on my finger, I have a little black. Um, so you, what I do is lay the glass flat, arrange it the way I want. If you want to have a straight edge, you can use a stick or something to make a straight edge. Um, it's going to be weak in the glue joint. So you put a little super glue at each of the places the glass touches the, another piece of glass. If it's too weak and breaks five times in a row, <laughs> then you might put a second piece of glass on top of the area where there's a joint. Now, since you're making it on a flat surface, the, the part that's down here will be fairly flat. So you might want to put turn it over and put an extra piece of glass on the back side. You can use a piece of string um, and put a little nail in uh, on a window frame and uh, then hang it in front of uh, a window so light would come through it. Um, if you don't want to make a cross, you can make a circle or a triangle. Um, you can make just a design that pleases you. But that's the simple process, and um, you can get super glue at a Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, it'll take, um, you know, 20, 30 seconds for it to cure. Uh, and um, good luck. Enjoy it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> the scripture reading is from the Gospel of Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, from the Common English Bible. Jesus heals a paralytic. After a few days, Jesus went back to Capernaum, and people heard that he was at home. So many gathered that there was no longer space, not even near the door. Jesus was speaking the word to them. Some people arrived, and four of them were bringing to him a man who was paralyzed. They couldn't carry him through the crowd, so they tore off part of the roof above where Jesus was. When they had made an opening, they lowered the mat on which the paralyzed man was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, child, your sins are forgiven. Some legal experts were sitting there muttering among themselves, why does he speak this way? He's insulting God. Only the one God can forgive sins. Jesus immediately recognized what they were discussing, and he said to them, why do you fill your minds with these questions? Which is easier to say to a paralyzed person, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take up your bed and walk. But so you will know that the human one has authority on the earth to forgive sins. 
he said to the man who was paralyzed, get up, take your mat and go home. Jesus raised him up and right away he picked up his mat and walked out in front of everybody. They were all amazed and praised God saying, we've never seen anything like this. Here ends the scripture reading. Let us pause for a word of prayer. Most loving God, may your Holy Spirit come upon us and touch us with your grace. And may your word of healing and love find a place in our hearts. And may our words and our meditations be acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm sure I've heard many sermons on this reading, which Jenny shared with us just a few moments ago, the story of Jesus healing the paralyzed man. I don't really remember them. I'm sure I heard them. I've only remembered one, one sermon that has always stayed with me, always stayed in my mind and heart on this story of Jesus healing the paralyzed man. But the interesting thing about this sermon that I remember so clearly is I really don't remember what the preacher's commentary was about the sermon, but I do remember that the, the preacher in this loud, deep, wonderful, deep, resonant voice, booming voice, would repeat this refrain over and over again in the sermon. And he said, child, son, daughter, your sins are forgiven. Arise, take up your mat and walk. And over and over again in that booming voice, he would say to all of us in the congregation, son, child, daughter, your sins are forgiven. Arise, take up your mat and walk. It was an incredible experience because the more he shared that powerful refrain in that very powerful booming voice, I started to feel like all that was inside of me that was weighing me down was starting to lift. And it's almost as though I was starting to stand up. I think everybody in the congregation felt the same way. And it was the most extraordinary experience of renewal, of re-energizing. I felt so strengthened to go out into the world just by hearing that refrain over and over again. Son, daughter, child, your sins are forgiven. Arise, take up your mat and walk. It was amazing. Well, that story of the healing of the paralyzed man is just one of the many healing stories of Jesus. Jesus healed a lot of people. There are many narratives in the gospel, in particular in the gospel of Mark. Jesus healed people from all walks in life, from all different parts of life. Jesus healed a lot of people. And clearly the impact of his words and of his actions were similar to the preacher on that Sunday many years ago that I heard in that congregation when we just felt lifted and strengthened, restored, burdens lifted by hearing those words over and over again. Well, this story of the healing of the paralyzed man is really a fabulous story. And it's a story that takes place in the Gospel of Mark early in Jesus's ministry. Now, it also appears in other Gospels, but I love the version in Mark. In fact, I love Mark's Gospel because there's so much drama and action, a lot of immediacy. It's a marvelous narrative. I encourage you to read this story on your own from the second chapter of Mark. So it is a wonderful, wonderful story, almost worthy of a Hollywood movie. Just think about this scene. Jesus is in a house in Capernaum where he was living at the time on the edge of the Sea of Galilee. 
and the house was packed with people who were coming to hear him. They were at the doors just trying to get in, kind of like trying to get in a crowded subway in New York City or Boston during rush hour. They were trying to push themselves in. They were packed in walls to walls. And this was not a large house, but there were a lot of people there. And here come this group of friends with this person who they cared about and they said he deserves healing and here he is on his mattress, on his mat, and they bring him to the house. They can't get in, it's so packed. So what do they do? Well, they climb to the roof and they dig a hole and bring him down. Now in, of course, the ancient Middle East, um, houses that were small and more modest. And this was a more modest house. This was not the house of a wealthy person. This was an everyday modest house. The, ro the roofs were made of earth and clay, maybe with some wood beans on underneath to hold them up, but basically of earth and clay. And so what the friends did is they got on top and they're digging and they lower him down. I can't imagine what it was like in that house with with the earth and the clay coming down to the ground on top of them but there it was what a great scene as i said that that's very much movie worthy so they make this hole in the roof what was it like after they left did they ever get the roof repair we never hear the end of that story and they lower him down to see jesus and Jesus looks at him. We don't know if Jesus knows him. We don't know if Jesus knows anything of his past, but Jesus's words suggest that possibly he does. But he says to this man on this mattress, child, son, your sins are forgiven. Arise, take up your mat and walk. And amazingly, he does the most amazing thing. Well, here's the thing about these marvelous healing stories of Jesus, and they really are marvelous stories. What is so amazing is that the stories actually are not really about the healing itself. They all point to something else. And I think there are two things that this story points to that relate to where we are in our lives today. They speak to us. And here's the first thing. Let's face it. A man has been paralyzed for all these years, comes and Jesus speaks to him and he gets up and walk. That sounds pretty impossible. And actually it probably was, but the story says it happens. So it's a story. It probably is not literally true, but that doesn't deny the truth of the story. This is very important for any stories we have in the Bible. They may not be literally true, but they have God's truth in them. They may not be historically true, but they have God's truth in them. And that is what matters to the biblical story. It's how we discern God's truth in a story, whether or not it historically happened. That is not important. So we have this story. What is it pointing to? Well, it points, I think, this is also a theme in Mark's gospel, that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. The healing of the paralyzed man, when taken literally, or when you really think about it rationally, is impossible. It can't happen. But the story tells us that something did happen and he walked because nothing is impossible with God. In other words, God takes what we in our, in our lives think, all those things that we think are impossible, God takes and turns around and makes possible in all dimensions of our life. When we think there is no hope, when we think there is no way, God makes a way. Now that's an important message, actually the whole gospel of Mark, that nothing is impossible with God. But the healing stories, such as this one, again, they point to even 
to even larger and greater truths. And in this instance, this particular story, what it really points to is not the healing itself, but the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. When Jesus said to this man on the mat, your sins are forgiven, something was lifted from him. Something that had been weighing him down and paralyzing him. It was lifted. All he needed to hear was the word from Jesus' voice. And it was a powerful word. Think about your own life. Think about those times when you have not been able to forgive yourself for something you have done. And you haven't really allowed that forgiveness from God to come into you. You haven't even allowed God to forgive you. Something that you just felt so badly about and you couldn't forgive yourself. Do you remember how paralyzing that feels? It is very paralyzing when we cannot forgive ourselves. It is very paralyzing when we cannot forgive another person. It weighs heavily on us. It constrains us. It keeps us confined. Because the ability to either allow ourselves be forgiven or to allow ourselves to forgive another person is one of the most freeing things that we can do. And you discover that when you allow yourself to be forgiven or forgive another person, that you are able to move in the world more freely, with more strength, with more energy, and ultimately with more joy. In other words, you take up your mat and you walk with renewed strength. Healing is not necessarily about physical healing. It's about restoring ourselves to wholeness. It's about bringing a wholeness and renewal to our souls. Healing is about bringing a peace to our souls. It is not about the physical hearing, healing. That is curing. The healing that Jesus gave in all these healing stories, was about bringing a wholeness to the soul so that the person could live more joyfully, more lovingly, with a restored and renewed spirit in the world. Healing is about restoring wholeness to the soul. And that is a very important thing to remember because if we look at the time we've been through, COVID, why did some people get healed and others didn't? They died. That mean that some were in God's favor and others weren't? Absolutely not. It is not God's desire that anyone should suffer. In fact, for those who died, who did not survive COVID and their families, God's heart was breaking with them. We don't know why some people have lived, have survived, and others haven't. But it is not because God had any judgment on that person, no. It is not because of God's will, quite to the contrary. So healing is not about physical healing. It's about restoring the wholeness of our person, of our soul, so that we can live more fruitfully in the world. So I want you to think this day, what is it in your life that is keeping you paralyzed? Because I believe we all have something that is keeping us from living in the most free and whole way, and that is preventing us from really feeling that deep inner peace that God desires for us. What is it? Is it an anger that you can't let go of? A resentment? Could it just be despair for the world? Maybe it's a fear. And again, maybe it's that you can't forgive yourself for something 
or you can't forgive someone else who hurt you. Anger, despair, maybe even indecision about something, fear, not being able to receive God's forgiveness and not being able to forgive. All of those are paralyzing emotions and they keep us on our mat and unable to walk freely in the world. With God, nothing is impossible. And so all that you are carrying, offer it to God. Pray over it. Ask for God to lift those burdens from you. Ask for Jesus to say the word to you. Arise, take up your mat and walk. With God, nothing is impossible. And so allow the Spirit of God to work through you, to lift whatever is paralyzing you, all those emotions, and restore a wholeness and joy to your spirit. Amen. We now come to the time where we lift up our prayers to God. If you are watching with someone and if you are comfortable doing so, today I invite you to take the hand of the person that you are with as we enter into this time of prayer. Let us pray. Wonderful Creator, how beautiful is this place in which we live. We give thanks for the warmer days that are starting to come our way, days that signal the coming of spring. They remind us of new life, and they remind us of our Lenten journey that we are making in this season towards the cross. As we make our journey, may we be mindful, may we be aware of your hand that is at work 
all around us. This time of Lent calls us to confession. And for our shortcomings, we ask for your forgiveness. May we each be aware when we hurt one another in any way. And may we be called to seek forgiveness. Open our eyes to see you all around us and to see the forgiveness that you give to each one of us. We lift up our prayers for the church and for the world. We remember within our own community those names listed within the bulletin. And today we especially grieve with Jeannie, her sister Edie, Edie's children, as they grieve the loss of their father, Jeannie's brother-in-law, Clark. We pray that each will be comforted in loving memories by the surrounding love of family and friends. And with your presence, a presence that is as close as our next breath. We continue to lift up those in Texas recovering from the consequences of extreme cold last week. And we especially remember the loss of life that was so unnecessary during power outages. A loving God, great is thy faithfulness to each one of us. May we too be as faithful unto you now and always. Good morning, it's a call to offering. In gratitude for God's presence in our lives and in gratitude for this church, we invite you to remember your pledges and offerings, especially during this time when we still are not able to worship in person. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we offer our gifts to you in love, we praise you. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit evermore, one God, triune, whom we adore. Amen.
Now go forth with confidence in God's love for you. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. You are forgiven and renewed and restored and made whole. Arise, take up your mat and walk. And may you be restored with the touch of God's healing balm in Gilead. And may you be renewed by the gift of the Holy Spirit to live with joy in the world. Amen.